Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today we are looking at the difference between the Sonos Play 1, which is 9 years old right now, versus the newer Sonos 1SL. The 1SL is the mic free edition, so we want to find out whether this is worth upgrading over the Sonos Play 1s, or if you have a choice between the two, which will you pick? Is there a difference? And more importantly, is there a difference in the sound quality? So let's dive right in today. So like how I always do in my videos up front, I give you the upfront summary. Now in terms of feature set, this is obviously the newer one, the Sonos One SL. It's a mic-free edition, so it doesn't have voice control, but the One has voice control for about $20 more. And it comes with a six mic array, and it has AirPlay 2. So these are the notable feature differences. In terms of sound difference, I would say between the two, the difference is going to be down to splitting hair very very little difference so if you are faced with the two or you have one and you're wondering whether it will make your sound better by upgrading to this i would say it's very marginal and you're not likely to hear the difference at all so if you have some time to stick around stay around and i will explore all the major differences between the two in terms of feature in terms of physical differences and in terms of sound by doing even frequency response sweep and measuring the response the frequency response of both of these speakers to answer the question once and for all a lot of questions come up regarding the difference between the sonos play one as well as the sonos one or the one sl and given that they are a good seven eight nine years apart there is going to be technological advances or is there let's find out so how I've usually been doing the frequency response sweep and the testing is that I'm using REW software. So this software runs on my Mac and for all intents and purposes, we are going to be looking at this monitor and I'll be calling it the computer or my Mac right now. And it passes in the inputs from this U-Mic 1. This is a mini DSP U-Mic 1. It's a USB mic that is connected to my computer. And what it does is that whatever sound that is being outputted from the computer to the speakers, it will measure. And if it says that it is trying to output 10 kilohertz, it will hear and it will listen. And is it 10 kilohertz or how loud or how soft it is at the 10 kilohertz output. How I output the sound from the computer to this is through AirPlay 2. So this is running a Mac now. So the Mac, well, it supports AirPlay 2 and it casts the sound output, right? Even at the system level, even when you're running REW and you are outputting the frequency sweeps to the Sonos One beautifully, easily, not a problem. But the problem comes with the Sonos Play One because the Sonos Play One does not have AirPlay. So how do you cast the sound from the computer to this guy? You can't even do a line in because this has no line in jack. How I got around that is I actually cast the Sonos One and then I will group in the Sonos Play 1 and reduce the volume of the Sonos 1 and just measuring the output from the Sonos Play 1. In fact, in the earlier test that I did, I even moved this to a completely separate room. So even if I were playing them at the same volume, it is actually just picking up from the Sonos Play 1. Okay, I'm just going to do a very quick demo of how I usually do this and it has. So let's go to the IUW software and I will measure. What I do is, I'm actually quite specific about it. I make sure that the speakers are in the exact same position. We'll be doing it for you now, just a demo here. And I will put this at about 20 centimeters away from the speaker. And you will play a frequency sweep. And there you go. This looks very jagged right now. What you can do is you can actually smooth it out or you can apply some kind of ERB smoothing. Uh, depends on what you're trying to look for here. But usually I use the ERB smoothing so the curve is a little bit easier to read and a little bit more flattened out. And I don't do just one, right? I will do it actually quite a couple of times. Okay, so what it did was it played frequencies from 20 Hz all the way to 20 kHz and 
the mic is picking up what is playing at 20 hertz, what is playing at 21, 22, 23, all the way up to 20,000 hertz and trying to measure the frequency response from there. So again, I don't have to do it all the time, but just to show you, I'm smoothing it out. And at the end of it, I will do an average response and I will remove all the previous and just look at the average response. So this is the curve that is coming up from the 1SL. So I'm not going to go through the whole video trying to step through all my multiple readings from the Sonos 1SL as well as the Play ones. And I have here previously what was loaded. So let me just open it up and we can get right to the reading. So this is the Sonos 1SL versus Play 1. There you go. Okay. Maybe it is not the easiest to read and I will make it easier then. Okay, the red curve is the Sonos Play 1, which is the older speaker, the one in white here. Remember, it's nine years old. And the green curve, you will see that this is the Sonos 1SL. This is a pretty recent speaker. The Well, there are a few generations, but the 1SL is the latest one without the mic input. And there's no far field mic array here to listen out to your voice commands. But in terms of sound performance, they're going to be quite similar across all the Gen 1s and the Gen 2s of the Sonos 1, as well as the 1SL, structurally, acoustically, or identical. Even between the two, it looks as though it is the same cabinet size already. Now, let's look at this. This is very interesting. If you look the, at the difference between the green and the red curve, it is actually, it, you're going to be, have to be splitting hair before you can find any difference. So the red one, which is the Sonos Play 1, it looks like it is playing lower, but bear in mind the difference is going to be just 1 or 2 dB. Now, in fact, what I'll do is I'm going to go to the settings and I will offset the Sonos Play 1 uh, dB, the loudness, right? Basically the volume, the amplitude of this whole response curve. Now, if I were to increase it by say 1 point, no, let's even keep it to 1 dB, right? And if you look at, by just increasing it to 1 dB, for all intents and purposes, these two curves are going to look very, very similar. If you can tell the difference between this kind of similarity, I don't know, your ears are definitely better than mine. In fact, for years I've been listening to these two guys and I can't really tell the difference between the two. And if you look at the lower frequency response range, now this is the this is where the Sonos Play 1 is going to be a little bit losing out a little bit to the newer Sonos 1SL. So it's either DSP or the custom drivers that they have implemented in the 1SL that is actually improving the bass response. So for any given uh, frequency below about 150, 180 hertz, the 1SL is going to be performing a little bit better. And you can see that it's actually a little bit smoother response and it's not so jagged like the Sonos Play ones, which is again the one in red curve. In terms of high treble extension, um, marginal difference, strangely the Play ones actually is performing a little bit better. Bear in mind, I've not done true play, right? So if you want to try true play and see how it adapts to your room, I would think that the Sonos 1, the one in green curve, because there's higher amplitude, there is going to be a little bit more headroom for your true play to do its magic. It can boost it down a little bit. It can, sorry, it can pull it down a little bit more or it can boost it up a little bit more to match your room. So this is where the headroom will come in a little bit more useful. But again, if you look at these two curves, almost identical. So in terms of sound quality, you can tell that uh, this is probably what I suspected, what I've been expecting all along. Today, I'm just deciding to do this video because I need to lay to rest once and for all that we are very, very sure that there's no difference in these two speakers in terms of sonic performance. Let's talk a little bit about the physical um, differences or rather the similarity between the two speakers. If you look at the newer Sonos 1, they are almost the same size. If you look at it, same height, same footprint, 
and even the weight is going to be similar. Now it comes in two colors, right? Uh, the Sonos Play One comes in black and white. I actually find the design, the color of the older Sonos Play One more attractive. It has this metallic shield uh, or what they call them, the metallic grille, which the two tones provides a little bit more contrast. If you have the black color version, which is slightly grayish, it actually has a graphite color shield. This is same color and unified color all throughout the whole speaker. If you get a white one, it's white throughout. The black one, black throughout. This is the current Sonos design language and they're sticking to it. So at the top of it, you'll see that the newer Sonos One SL or the Sonos One, regardless of generation, they are using capacitive touch controls. So this is the play pause and this is volume minus volume plus. To skip track, front and back, you just swipe across the top. It's actually pretty intuitive, pretty cool. Now, for the non-SL version, the full version, they actually have a mic, uh, mic indicator here as well as a mic control where you can disable the mic so that it's not listening to what you are you know, saying and if privacy is your kind of thing. As for the Sonos Play One, they are using physical buttons. So there's a play, pause button, volume plus and minus. Now this play, pause button also acts as skip forward and skip back. So double click for skipping forward, triple click for skipping back to the front of the song or the previous song. Now, at the back of this, notably, there is still the LAN port, but it has no connect button. So the connect button is actually replaced by pressing the play pause as well as the volume up at the same time. This has a screw hole, which you can actually mount easily to either speaker stands or wall mounts. But if you look at the Sonos, Play once, it doesn't have the screw thread. You can't mount it, it is not as secure. A lot of mounting options are just gripping it at the bottom just like that. But it does have that slightly concave recess connect button. Now the tweeters and the woofers in this, they are both numbered at one and one here and one and one here. The Sonos One, whether is it the Gen 1 or the Gen 2 or the Sonos One SL, they claim to have custom tweeters and custom woofers but uh, well they didn't claim that for the Sonos One but if you look at the response curve they're going to be so similar that I don't think there is a notable gain by having customized woofers and tweeters. Both of these are also moisture resistant. You can actually place them in the bathroom without much of a worry. You can't bring it to the pool of course because it's still the wire unless no it's not even splash resistant just moisture proof. Right? So if it is humid, it is okay. Not, don't splash water at these guys. Now both of these speakers, they can be paired as surround speakers to a home theater setup. So if you have an arc or a beam or a play bar or a play base, you can actually set these up as the rear surround speakers. Now you can't mix across these two models, but within the Sonos One family, be it the Gen 1 or the Gen 2 or the Sonos One SL, you can actually mix and match. So you don't have to buy the Sonos One both with the mic input because when you set it up as surround or stereo, only one of them is receiving input. So you could just buy a normal, a regular one with the mic and a One SL without the mic and save yourself $20 in that particular setup. If you pair it with the Beam or the Sonos Arc, you actually do get voice control ready. So the Sonos One SL, it makes perfect sense for it to be used as surround channels. Now, both of these speakers can also be paired with a sub. Now, if you pair this with a sub, then anything that is below 110 hertz, you can basically, you know, not worry about it. So, if you are looking at either of these speakers, or if you have this paired to a sub, you will not get any appreciable upgrade or not get any appreciable difference when you move from the Sonos Play 1 to the Sonos One or the One SL, assuming you have the sub because the sub handles the lower frequency and the only difference seems to be that small little uptake in terms of bass response below 150, 180 hertz or so, which is not going to be a large difference looking at the curve here, but both will benefit greatly from the addition of a sub if music is your thing and this still works very well with the Sonos Sub. So it seems that I've covered all the differences and the similarities between the two speakers physically as well as sound-wise. Now, if your question is on usability, on function and features, 
whether you should get the Sonos One SL or whether you should upgrade from this Play One to the Sonos One or the One SL, then yes, because there is AirPlay. Both of them will support True Play, but there's a room tuning. AirPlay is a whole level of convenience that is brought about if you are in the Apple ecosystem. If you are using a MacBook or if you are using a Mac, using an iPhone or iPad, you can AirPlay and basically cast the sound output to this speaker. But the Sonos Play One has no AirPlay functionality. Uh, apparently, Sonos says that the computational power inside this guy, the CPU or the memory, whatever it is, is not sufficient to handle the requirements of AirPlay 2. But I actually think it could be a licensing issue. I don't know, don't quote me. So like I said earlier, if you are using it with a sub, there is no difference. If you are using it in a surround environment, do you need to upgrade from the Sonos Play 1 to the Sonos One SL? Actually, no, you don't need to upgrade because for the Sonos sound system, for the Sonos home theater system, basically, if you are looking at the difference, the range rather, of sounds that are being produced by the rear surround speakers, they are not going to be covering the lower frequency at all. Most of the time, the front setup actually has bigger drivers and they will be carrying the base frequencies a little bit more. So Sonos will roll off the lower frequencies and roll off, in fact, even above 4 kHz or so to the rear surround channel. So those frequencies at the extreme ends are not going to be played by the Sonos speakers that much. But that being said, we have tested the Sonos Play 3 we have tested the Sonos 5 as rear surround channel and we know one thing, they can get loud. So even if the frequencies are not being channeled to the back, depending on the speaker, it can actually get a lot louder. And when it's a lot louder, and that's how sound works, right? Because when everything is lifted up, you get more bass, you get more mids, you get more range, you get more highs. So basically I'll say, if you want to upgrade the rear surround, if you're on this moving, to the Sonos One, it's not going to get you a lot. But moving to the Sonos Play 3 or even the new Sonos 5, you will get a lot more sound for your home theater setup. If you measure it out, in fact, you don't even have to measure. Just upgrade the rear surround speaker, you play out the home theater sound system, the room fills up a lot louder. So now, I actually am trying to answer two questions. The first question which I've answered is, is the sound similar or is it better or is there a difference? I would say for all intents and purposes, negligible difference. So don't sweat it if you have this. Don't worry about what you're missing out. Again, if the price difference is going to be within $10, $20, I'll say go for the newer one, right? It probably fits the design language of your Sonos Beam or your Sonos Art. Appar uh, I mean, assuming it's newer, uh, a little bit better. If you are still using the play bar, then I'll say this design language fits the play bar a little bit better as well. The play base onwards, it looks somehow like this already. And they are using the touch capacitive controls. And in the surround setup, you really don't need the airplay. So technically you could make do with this and you won't be missing out much at all. But, but if you are into music, if you are using these primarily as the single speaker or as a stereo setup, in a stereo setup, then you're going to be appreciating one key difference, which is the AirPlay 2. If you are on the iOS platform, if you are on the Mac platform, if you are using even the Apple TV, you can actually AirPlay to the Sonos One or the One SL. And you can't do that with the Sonos Play One. Well, the Play One next year, right, just round the corner, 2021 is just round the corner. Next year, this guy will be 10 years old. It is amazing, but Sonos is still supporting this guy. So, you know, by the trajectory, I think we will still have a good six, seven, eight years with the Sonos One. So in any case, this is now out of production. You can't really buy the Sonos Play Ones anymore. If you can get, get if you can get them at a great price used or otherwise maybe like half the price of the Sonos One, then sure, by all means, go ahead. But don't forget, there's always IKEA Symphonics bookshelf which is $99 and it is new and it is AirPlay supported as well. So uh, don't buy this new, but if you have it lying around, don't worry about it. Don't need to get rid of it. This will still have a lot of legs to run. Don't sell this guy to upgrade. No need to. But if you are looking for a newer speaker, 
this Sonos One XL is actually a great option to consider at $179. And when you add up $20 to that price, to $200, $199, you are going to be getting the smarts of it. You're going to get voice assistant, you can get Google Assistant, you can get Amazon Alexa, and both will work on the Sonos One. So I hope you have found today's video interesting and it has answered the question of whether there is a sonic difference between the two. And I'll leave you with food for thought whether you want to upgrade the speaker or not. To me, not much of a difference. So for those of you who have found my video useful, please do consider subscribing and leaving a like on this video. And if you are keeping either one of these two speakers and you want to find out more about them, do drop a comment in the comment section below. I'll be glad to help you out when I get the time to look through the comments. For those of you who have found extra help and found my channel extra useful, I would like to invite you, drop me a small tip at my coffee fund. I'm linking up my QR code here. This goes to my Patreon account. So if you have a Patreon account, or it takes a few more clicks and you can start contributing to my coffee fund on a regular basis. Only if you find it useful, otherwise it's okay. Just come by. Participate in community. I am glad to be able to share my knowledge on any wireless audio products, especially Sonos products in my lineup. Okay, so I will see you in my next video.